everyone. I am Dr. Monica working as associate professor in NIET Pharmacy Institute which has been affiliated to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam University. I am taking the subject industrial pharmacy 1 having code BP502T. So, in this subject I am mainly taking the topic and unit number 5 and that unit as I have told that I have divided into 3 modules out of these 3 modules first module was cosmetics, second module is pharmaceutical aerosols and third module is packaging. So, I have covered up my cosmetics module in previous sessions and even started with the second module that is module uh, 2 uh, pharmaceutical aerosols. And in that module number 2, I have taken up a session on uh, that is what we how we can define aerosols as well as I have taken up that I told you that how valve systems are being uh, prepared or designed, designing of valve system we de did. And in my second session of module 2, I mainly focused on how we can manufacture of our aerosol products. In that manufacturing part, I mainly uh, told you about that uh, how we can prepare or how we can manufacture a pharmaceutical aerosols uh, which we divided into three parts. One is cold filling, pressure filling and compressed gas filling along with that we covered up that how rotary machines works. So, that thing we did in our previous sessions. So, in this session what I am going to take is quality control test. Once now here after going through my that is session number uh, 1 uh, of module 2, you must now knowing that what we mean by pharmaceutical aerosols. You now you know how you can design a valve assembly. You are knowing that how we can manufacture our pharmaceutical aerosol products using various techniques how at industrial levels. So, now once you have generated a pharmaceutical aerosol products, now what you need to understand is quality control test. If you are not able to uh, provide a quality product, your product will not come to the market. So, quality tests are need to be performed in our on our products, whatever products we generate at industrial level. So, how we can go forward with the quality control test and what kind of test we need to for that is do to prove the quality of our pharmaceutical product is that first quality test need to be done on raw materials. Quality always starts from the initial point. Now, initial point is your raw materials. Now, raw materials of our aerosol products are propellants, we have valve systems, uh, we have product concentrates which we need to add in our aerosol system. So, we need to prove the quality of each and every system before go moving forward finished product. One is in process test quality control test can be divided into two parts one is in process test and second one is your that is end product test once you have generated the product in at the end you are going to perform those tests. So, in the in process test we have to go for propellant test we need to test our wall system which we are going to use into our aerosol system we need to uh, that is prove the quality of our meter dosed uh, inhaler uh, products we need to test the meter dose that they must be able to provide the quantity required for the uh, that is treat the disease that dose must be accurate whatever dose is coming out of the container that dose must be accurate that can be tested using various solutions. So, similarly you have to go for container uh, pressure test, you have to go for weight checking, you have to go for leak test and spray test. So, these are all the tests you need to perform on your aerosol containers or aerosol products. First propellant, whatever propellants you are going to use that propellant must be that is you need to test that propellant whatever propellant you are not going to add into your product that propellant must be tested. And now how we can test that propellant that propellant can be tested that it must be able to have proper that is uh, pressure 
which pressure need to be provided within the container that pressure it that propellant must have and we must go for well, uh, valve actuator test whatever valves we are going to use into our pharmaceutical product that valve system actuators and dip tube in the valve system must work properly that need to be tested and meter dose inhaler test test solution being used for meter dose meter dose means that they are providing correct quantity of drug and correct dose is being coming out from the valve system that need to be tested and for that we need three solution need to be prepared now what are those three pre solution the test solution number a that will contain isoprovyl meristicate dichloro difluoromethane and that is dichloro tetrafluoro uh, ethane so test solution a will contain the, that is isopropyl meristicate dichlorophilolomethane and dichloro tetrafluoroethane whereas test solution b will contain isopropyl meristicate alcohol dichloro dichloromethane uh, and uh, that is dichloro tetrafluoroethane whereas test that is type c will contain isopropyl meristicate dichloro difluoromethane trichloro monofluoromethane and dichloro tetrafluoroethane these four ingredients will be there within the test solution c so c solution contains four ingredients isopropyl meristicate dichloro difluoromethane dichloro tetrafluoromethane and trichloro monofluoromethane so in that way you have to prepare this solution you have to add into the aerosol container close the system after closing the uh, system with the well help of valve what you need to do you what you need to do is you have to press the actuator button now this will test whether your product is generating correct amount of dose from the container or not for that you have to actuate the button and after actuating the button you have to press it for minimum 2 seconds after pressing it the content will come out containing this solution either a b or c that content will come out and you have to reweigh that container first weigh the empty container after that add the solution again weigh the container after weighing you have to actuate the button for 2 seconds and this process need to be repeated minimum 10 times 10 times you will repeat the process and after repeating the process you have to reweigh the containers again and after reweighing you will come to know in 10 actuation how much amount of solution came out from the sol that uh, that is after actuation how much solution came out from the container so reweighing will give you an idea after taking the difference between initial weight and the reweighing weight you will come to know how much dose is coming out from the meter dose containers and that must be that is according to the specified uh, that is specification or uh, whatever specification has been given in the indian pharmacopias or usp according to that specification your valve system or meter dose containers must work so that you need to check whether your meter dose containers are providing correct dose or not after that you have to go for container pressure tolerance test that means you must understand that whether your container maybe the aerosol containers may be made up of uh, that is metals can be made up of plastics can be made up of uh, glass so whatever containers you are using those containers must be able to handle a pressure a certain level of pressure which is being generated by the propellants that certain level of pressure those containers must be able to tolerate so what you have to do you have to place your containers aerosol containers into the system in which you can increase the temperature slowly and slowly and once you will increase the temperature a point will get come where when the container will burst out and that pressure you need to note it down that the point at which that uh, particular container burst out that pressure you need to note it down that is the maximum tolerance level of that container is that container can tolerate thus just that amount of pressure so that need to be tested on the containers which is the container which are being used for the manufacture of your aerosol products weight and checking test need to be performed leaking test that your container must not leak out leakage test is being performed how we can perform the leakage test we can go for acid dyes we can use the various kinds of dyes dye solution and we will place our container into that dye solution and 
if our dye moves into the container that means somewhere your container may be leaking that dye moves in and when you will open the valve system you will observe some droplets of those dyes within the container that means there will be there may, may be some kind of leakage in the system so that leak test need to be performed onto the container system you have to perform the spray test whatever sprays you need to uh, uh, generate from the aerosol system that spray or that foam system if uh, your valve system is generating a foam if your uh, valve system is generating that is foam or mist that need to be tested that whether your valve system is working properly or not so these kind of quality check need to be performed before doing the end product test end product test what we understand by the term end product that once you have taken the container put the concentrate place the valve system add the propellant and after adding propellant <coughs> what will happen that your valve system uh, after adding propellant you will seal with the actuators and uh, that is whole aerosol container will be sealed and once it has been sealed after that this 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 that product is known as finished product and on those finished product also we need to perform various kinds of test like flame and combustibility test we need to perform flash point test or flash extension or flash back test this is one of the test we can perform on our that is finished product second test we can perform biological testing we can study the therapeutic efficacy of our product whatever product we have added into the, our aerosol containers that must be therapeutically effective and then it must not be toxic in nature whatever agents we have added into the aerosol system that must not become toxic after uh, putting it into the aerosol container so we need to check the physico chemical characteristics of our formulation as well as aerosol system so these after that we have to perform performance test that is aerosol valve discharge rate for mainly the meter dose containers as i have discussed before we need to perform the leakage test on the aerosol finished product we need to perform particle size determination the whatever particles they are generating in the form of mist from the valve system are coming out that particle size need to be determined that how much particle size sprays are being coming out from the valve system we need to perform the form stability if our uh, valve system is generating a form then we need to understand the form whatever form is being generated from the aerosol system how for how much time it will remain stable that form that we need to perform on our aerosol systems after that we need to perform that is net content test on the aerosol systems so one by one we will discuss all these tests which we need to perform uh, that is quality control test which we need to perform on our end products of aerosols we need to perform these tests also like quality control test for propellants walls containers weight checking leak test spray pattern test and we also need to perform evaluation on packaging components like protection they must be protect they must protect the uh, uh, your product concentrate they must be compatible with your product concentrate and they must be safe to use whatever containers you are using components you are using that must be safe to use so these all test quality control test we need to perform after we have generated our finished product so one by one, one by one as we will discuss all these test first test i have uh, told in the previous slide that is flash point now how we can determine the flash point of our aerosol system as we spray our aerosols so what we need to do is we need to note down that flash point now how we can note it down the flash point in order to determine the flash point what we need to do is we have to use two we can use two basic operators are being used what are those two basic operators one is open cup open cup tag operators second one is closed cup tag operators one is open cup and second one is closed cup tag operators method remains the same but whatever operators we are using that operators in the first case is open and second case it is closed and in case of open cup what we need we will do that is flash point test is done 
by cooling the temperature of the aerosols to 25 minus 25 degree Fahrenheit. What you need to do is you have to reduce the temperature of your tag cup, whatever cup apparatus you are going to use, you have to reduce the that is uh, temperature of that particular container to minus 25 degree Fahrenheit and test liquid temperature is allowed to increase slowly and the temperature at which vapors ignite that temperature is called, called as flash point means what you need to do is you have to take a cup tag apparatus reduce the temperature to minus 25 degree Fahrenheit after that place your aerosol container into that spray it and it try to rise the temperature of that container and when the temperature rises the vapors which will be generated with the aerosol system those vapors the temperature at which those vapors gets ignited that temperature is called as flash point second is closed cup apparatus in this case we will not uh, take a open cup but we will close the cup with some uh, lid the closed cup apparatus purpose is to stimulate or simulate the situation of fluid filled in the closed environmental condition in closed cup test to determine the flash point to that, that investigate the sample is placed inside the sealed test cup and introduced to the potential ignition source. So means closing is just indicating that you are creating same environment in which your product concentrate in which your propellant is being incorporated. So same creating such an in, uh, closed environment where what we will do we will close the cup and after that we will try to generate the vapors and the point at which vapors gets ignited that temperature is noted down that will gives us the flash point of that particular propellant after that aerosol valve discharge rate now how we can determine that aerosol valve discharge rate discharge rate means at particular time how much amount of uh, that is component or product concentrate is being released by the wall at a particular time how much concentrate will be released by the product that is known as discharge rate content of the aerosol products of known weight is discharged for specific period of time as I told in my previous slide that what you need to do you have to take aerosol equipment filled aerosol equipment or aerosol container after taking it what you will do you will press the actuator button after pressing the actuator button for two seconds what will happen it will release its content and really when it releases its content the weight of the container will decrease and that difference you need to note it then now note it down that what was the weight initial weight and what was the weight after actuating button for two seconds and similarly you have to not just perform this test on single container minimum 25 containers or you have to perform uh, to prove the quality of your product or with aerosols you are generating minimum you have to perform this test on 20 uh, valve systems 20 valve system you have to take and after uh, that the same steps will be performed you have to actuate the button for two seconds and after actuating the button for two seconds you have to weigh the re-weigh the containers and after re-weighing the containers you have to note it down the reading of that thing and you are uh, the chain the, the, you have to note down the difference between the weights initial weight and the uh, that is uh, after actuating for two seconds what was the weight of the aerosol containers and minimum what you need to do is you have to that is perform this test minimum for 10 minutes for every two seconds you have to press the button release the content wait again press the button for two seconds release the contents and wait, wait. and average of that uh, that is change in weight you have to note it then down that how much change was taking place and uh, by dividing it with the time for the time you have actuated the button will gives you a discharge rate discharge rate is the product content which are re which is released divided by the time for which you have actuated the button so that will gives you the aerosol wall discharge rate this test you need to perform second test which you need to perform is the leakage test and now how we can go for leakage test as i have told that for leakage test it is done by measuring the crimps dimension and comparing 
final testing of the wall closure is done by passing filled containers to the water bath. Once we as in every manufacturing process, whether we are going for pressure filling, whether we going we are going for cold filling, whether we are going for compressed gas filling, whatever manufacturing processes we are being using, we always pass our containers from the water bath. And this if there is any leakage, it will generate the bubbles. Bubbles will be generated and bubbles generation will indicate that there is some kind of leakage in the container. Containers are not being, valve systems are not being placed properly onto the aerosol system. So, leakage test need to be performed during the, in, this is in process test during the, when the, the package is passing through the, that is uh, manufacturing part. After that, what you need to do is, you need to perform the particle size determination. Now, how particle size is being determined? For this, we need to have an equipment called cascade inspector or light scattering decay equipment. These are the equipments which are used for, which are being used for particle size determination. Cascade inspe in, impactors or inspectors principal stream. In this case, what will happen is that principal stream of particles projected through the three series of nozzles and glass slide at high velocity. Large particles are impacted first on the lower at lower velocities and smaller particles are collected at higher velocities. Means what you need to do, you have to impact your what you when you will press the actuator button aerosol particles will come out from the system and when those particles will come out larger particles will have slow low vis, uh, velocity and uh, that is smaller particles will have higher velocity so in that way higher velocity particles are smaller and lower velocity particles are bigger in size so in that way we can that is differentiate between lower size and higher sizes. Light scattering decay can be used using a way passing a light through the that is system. When we will spray the uh, that is uh, aerosol after we will that after that we will pass the light out, uh, out, out of it. We can also perform this form stability. How we can perform form stability? We will press the actuator button form will generate and after the form will generate you will note down the time to uh, that is form will Stay, uh, settle down. That time need to be noted the time at which this that particular form will that is uh, settle down that time will give you the that is for how much time that form was stable. Even you can go for uh, that is where you can also do the visual uh, analysis of your products. Visual analysis can be done using various kinds of that is rotational viscometers can be used for that. After that you can go for net content test that means first weigh the container after that actuate the button release the form form base releases and re-weigh the uh, net content which are available that you can uh, note it down by re-weighing the containers so, so form stability actually is being done by noting down the form uh, for how much time it take the whatever form has been released whatever what time it will take to settle down that time need to be noted down after that spray pattern you can note Spray pattern can be noted down using a paper piece having a dye content when you will spray out that color will generate onto the paper that color you can that color that is dye talc mixture is being used and your sprays whatever spray you will put on on the onto the dye paper that spray pattern will be created on the paper. So that pattern you can note it down meter dose wall I have already explained how meter dose wall wall work and what we need to how we can analyze the meter dosage. So, propellant and actuators wall system how they work propellant vapor pressure and density of propellant are need to be determined and compared with specification sheet parameters tested by identification of gas chromatography for propellant we can go for gas chromatography we can go for IR spectrophotometry we can go for purity and acceptability test moisture halogen or null volatile residue present within the propellant can also be determined using various techniques like chromatographic techniques. We need to analyze wall system, actuators and dip tubes. They must work properly. Container must that be able to handle the pressure that is 180 psi at 
130 degree Fahrenheit. So, this is a condition that the container must be able to handle that is 180 psi pressure at temperature of 130 Fahrenheit. Weight checking I have already explained how we can go for weight checking, how we can go for leakage test using the dyes we can go for leakage test after passing the containers to the water bath and using the dyes. If dye moves in the container that means there is some leakage within the containers that test we can perform. Spray pattern we can analyze using the that is paper papers uh, the, uh, that is paper which are already treated with the dyes you will put on the aerosol uh, pressurize the aerosol or actuate the aerosol product and once the product will reach the paper uh, that is it will create a pattern whatever pattern spray pattern will be uh, you will be able to see on the paper having dye that pattern you can note down protection you can uh, see that your container must be able to protect your product concentrate product concentrate which you have added formulation which you had have added into the container that, that container must be able to protect that formulation from the microbes from the environment oxygen or other uh, agents which are moisture whatever is present within the environment your container must be able to give the protection against that to your product. So, these are the references which you can follow for your uh, that is quality control test of pharmaceutical. Whole pharmaceutical aerosol chapter has been included within the theory and practice of industrial pharmacy by Leon uh, Lieberman. Thank you so much.